Hi, and welcome to the Yoga with Tim 30 Day Challenge. I'm Tim, and this is my dog, Ollie. And I want to give you a brief course overview as to what we'll be doing in the challenge and how it's going to help to change your body. I designed this program so that it will challenge your body to build strength and flexibility, but at the same time, take into account the necessary time for recovery. The recovery is just as important because when you take time to let the body heal, you'll come back stronger and your body will move better. So there's no equipment needed for this course, although at times I'll give you the option to use a couple of blocks or a strap, especially if you're struggling in a pose, it can help to create a better opening. And in this course, I've designed it so that in week one, we'll build a foundation, we'll learn some important concepts, and then we're gonna build on that and add some more challenge to it. So I'm pumped that you're here on the challenge with me. And if you're ready to take this challenge, I need you to do just a few things at the end of the video. First, in the description below, you're gonna see a link to sign up for the challenge. I'll send you a daily reminder along with the video, a little bit of encouragement about the course. Step two, click the subscribe button. You can either click the subscribe button and the red button there in the description. And third, to let me know that you're in on the challenge, comment below, I'm in on the challenge, and hit the like button while you're at it. All right, should we get started? Let's do it. We're gonna begin lying down onto the back. So we're gonna begin today's class lying down onto the back in order to relax the chronically tight muscles and to better engage our core and feel our spine length. But before you lie down, I'm just gonna give you a brief demonstration of what we're gonna address. So because of all the time we spend seated in chairs with forward head posture, we get a curve in our neck like so, a hunched upper back. Because the hip flexors are super tight, when we go to stand up, they pull our pelvis into an anterior tilt. So from this tilt, we get achy lower backs. From the head being forward, we get a stiff upper back neck situation, and the upper back stays in its rounded position. So we're gonna do an exercise to address that right off the bat. So the first thing that I want you to do is to lie down onto your back and feel now that the hips can open that the rib cage wants to lift. So we're gonna start to draw that in and down to activate our transverse abdominus, which is our core. And when we get the core to turn on, it's gonna support us through all the movements. It's gonna help to lengthen out the spine and allow those areas that are tight to release. Just focusing on stretching them isn't gonna be a cure-all. So as you go to lie down onto your back, first exhale and let the rib cage draw in and down. Now as you inhale, see if you can expand the whole 360 degrees of the bottom of the rib cage, the back and the front. And then as you exhale, Feel the front ribs hug in and down. The whole rib cage hugs down. Eyes closed, breathe in. Fill the whole 360 degrees. And let it out. So we're gonna keep this breath through the nose throughout the practice, focusing on the diaphragmatic breath. Now let's do a little exercise to help to reposition. So I want you to dig your heels into the mat and contract your hamstrings. Move your buttocks towards the backs of your knees. And then as you exhale, hug the rib cage down. So you're making a connection between the pelvis and the rib cage instead of the pelvis tilting the other way. Then raise your arms up. And as you hold your hamstrings taut, like you're pulling the mat towards you, on an inhalation, spread your collarbones and reach your arms back a third of the way. Then as you exhale, move the ribs in and down, contract your hamstrings. Inhale, collarbones broad, let the arms go back a little further. Exhale. Inhale, collarbones broaden. Without losing the ribs, can you let the arms go back a little further? Bring your arms back up, we're gonna do that one more time. Exhale, contract the hamstrings, curl the tailbone towards the ceiling, 
hug the ribs in and down. Inhale, collarbones broad as you go back a third of the way. Exhale, the ribs down. Inhale, collarbones broad. Exhale, the ribs down. Inhale, collarbones broad as the arms go back a little further. Still keep the rib cage connected to the pelvis, the hamstrings engaged. And exhale. Then bring your arms down at your side and let your lower back go into neutral so it's no longer flattened. Then press down into your heels and curl your hips up. And feel your hamstrings and your glutes turn on. Lower your butt back down. Then raise your arms up. And as you exhale, press your elbows down, lift your hips up. Still keep the rib cage pelvis connection, but now we're gonna turn on the muscles in the back of the shoulders so you'll drive down through your elbows and the backs of your arms. Collarbones broad, don't let the neck tense up. Inhale, slowly lower. Exhale, still keeping the memory of the rib cage and pelvis connection because that's our core. Inhale. Exhale. Now hold your hips up, take this right arm, reach up and over to the left side and look over to the left shoulder, to the ground. Lower yourself down, lift back up. Feel the backs of the shoulders turn on, ribs in and down. And then reach the left arm, look up and over at your right shoulder. Lower back down. Lift up, reach up and over, lower down. You should feel the hamstrings really working now. Lift up, it might turn to cramp city if you're really doing it well, reach over and lower down. Then gently hug your right knee into your chest as you stretch your left leg out along the ground. Descend your femur, stretch out through your foot. Make the foot active instead of just hanging lazy like that. After midnight, you can let it all hang out. But for now, for the next uh, 20 minutes, we're going to try to keep things active and keep the core turned on. Change legs. Hug your left knee in as you stretch your right leg out. Point the toes up to the ceiling. Move your femur down and away from you. Good, then hug the right knee in as you stretch your left leg out. Take your right arm up and slowly reach it back and see if you can keep the ribs down as you're reaching back. Then change legs. Bring your right hand to your left knee as you slide your right heel out and keep your rib pelvis connection as you reach through the heel and reach through the arm. It's challenging it, so it's a little bit of core work. You can keep it going, sliding the heel along the ground, or if you want to make it more challenging, you're going to lift that leg up. And change sides, maintaining the connection when you change. That's when it's really going to count. And the further you reach, can you still keep it? Change sides. Change sides. And now the most advanced, take your legs in tabletop. See if you can lower your legs a third of the way without your pelvis going with it. So you keep this connection. I feel like I've said that a thousand times now. And then slowly take your arms back, collarbones broad, without letting the ribs tip up. Bring it back up. See if you can take the knees a little further. Maybe halfway as the arms reach back, ribs in. Back up. If you find this too challenging, just stick with the uh, alternating arm and leg. Back up. Last one. And back up. Hug your knees into your chest. Roll yourself up to seated. And come onto your hands and your knees. Let's do some cat cow. So with your hands right underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. As you inhale, flip your tailbone up and 
Roll your spine into extension segmentally. As you exhale, tuck your pelvis and round through your back. Inhale into extension. And exhale into flexion. One more. Then come into neutral. Connect your ribcage to your pelvis instead of letting it hang. And with your core turned on, back ribs broad, can you lift your knees up just an inch maintaining that? So you're loading the arms while training your core to stay on. Now, if that's going really well, you can straighten your legs, step them back, but don't let your tailbone fly up. Connect your tailbone to your heels, rib cage to your pelvis, and then feel the neck is free. So if your core is really turned on like that, it should help to alleviate wrist pressure. But if this bothers the wrist, you can just keep the knees down. Now lower your knees, big toes together, stretch back into child's pose. So I just want you to remember to take this practice at your own pace. If something's feeling like it doesn't work for you, you can just drop into child's pose and then join again when you feel like you're ready for it. So listen to your body, stay connected to your breath. All right, now let's try our first downward facing dog. With your knees bent, draw your ribs in, breathe into the whole circumference, whole 360 degrees like we practiced at the beginning as you lift and stretch the hips up and back. And then see if you can straighten your legs slowly without losing your length. Then step your feet forward with a little bend in your knees. Let your head drop. Roll yourself up to stand. And stand tall in mountain pose. Balance in between your heels and your toe mounds. Aim your pelvis straight down, your ribs straight down to your pelvis, and balance the roof of your mouth over your pelvic floor. You gotta think about where those things are for a second. Okay. Then as you inhale, spread your arms out to the side, externally rotate, and reach all the way up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, slide your hands up your shins. And look to lengthen out from your uh, sit bones all the way out to the crown of your head, but without your middle dropping. And then as you exhale, slide your hands back down, but don't be rigid about it. Because if you're real rigid, then you'll create more tension. Press down through your feet. Inhale, come back up. Externally rotate your arms, reach up. And slowly bring your arms to your side. One more like that. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend in the knees, slide the hands to the shins, connect your rib page to your pelvis, and then stretch your spine. Reach back through your sit bones, reach forward through your ears. And as you exhale, fold. Now let's step back into a lunge. So lean your way into your right foot, step your left foot back and drop your knee down to the ground. Point your toes back, press through your right foot, engage your right hip. Inhale, raise your arms up. Bring your hands down to the mat and step back into down dog or child's pose. Then whether you're in down dog or child's pose, step your left foot forward, drop your knee down. Point your toes back, descend your left foot, engage your left outer hip, and as you inhale, come up, raise your arms up. 
Exhale, hands down to the mat. Now step forward to the front of your mat and fold, let your head drop. Reach down through your feet and as you inhale, come up, raise your arms. Exhale the arms to your side. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, find the flat back. Bring the hands down, step your right leg back, lower your knee and point your toes back. Inhale, come up. Now you know what to do. Exhale the hands to the mat. Step back into down dog or child's pose. Then step your right foot forward. Drop your knee down. Inhale, raise your arms up. Bring your hands down. Step forward and fold. Press into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Then take your arms forward and sit back like you're sitting into a chair. Feel your transverse turn on by exhaling the rib cage straight down to the pelvis. And then as you inhale, expand the whole 360 degrees, the whole circumference of the bottom of the rib cage that's down there. Now see if you can lift your arms up into a Y position and lift from the thumbs, feel the back of the shoulder turn on without losing your core connection. So we're strengthening those weak muscles in the back of the shoulder. And as those get stronger, they'll hold your shoulders in a better position, but you have to keep the core connection. If you let your middle drop, then you're not gonna be working there. And you just be strengthening the poor posture. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Then step back into a plank position. Hold in your plank. Hold strong in the plank. Tailbone in position, ribs in. And we're gonna hold for three minutes. No, that's too long. We're just gonna hold for 20 more seconds. And remember, if it's too much, you can just drop your knees down and focus on engaging your core that way. Now from here, can you set one elbow down and then the other and engage your core again. Instead of letting your middle drop, reach your tailbone to your heels, draw your rib cage to your pelvis, make sure the neck is free and lengthen your spine as you reach to your inner feet. Feet normally just wanna do this situation, just dead feet. Don't do the dead feet. Okay, now slowly lower your hips down to the ground Oh, find some Sphinx pose. How good does it feel to open up your chest here? But keep the memory of your rib cage pelvis connection so that the T-spine, your thoracic spine, can take more back bend. If you just let the lower back take all the back bend, the upper back doesn't, it's like, hey, can I get some of the back bend? Not if the lower back's hogging it. All right, lower yourself down. And before we go to stretch the arms forward, we're gonna try to make the connection here. So instead of letting your ribs drop into the ground like so, we're gonna move the ribs to the pelvis, move the tailbone to the heels. Your core is gonna be so strong after this. Now slide your arms forward along the mat and see if you can turn your thumbs up, press the feet down, engage your legs and keep that connection there. Okay, that's pretty good. So now you're getting a true stretch for your under armpit. You're getting a true stretch with the core engaged. And so what I was talking about earlier, this is really gonna lengthen those tight muscles. If the core isn't taken into consideration, when you go to stretch, you're just pulling from the lower back. So that just causes more lower back issues. So as we're strengthening here, see if you can pull your arms back into cactus position and then lift the hands away from the ground. Now, as you do that, you can feel the muscles in the back of your shoulder, armpit turn on. Those are your external rotators. 
And the stronger these get, the more it's going to hold your shoulder in good posture in a good position. But don't let your core drop. And then can you slowly stretch the arms forward without the hands touching the ground? Still keep the core turned on so you're getting a true stretch for the shoulder and a true strengthening for the back of the shoulder. One more time, pull the arms back. Can you feel the back of the shoulder? Keep your core, press your feet down, squeeze your legs, and then stretch the arm forward. Last one. Slide your hands back into cobra position. And now as you inhale, start to make a back bend from your upper back. So from the bra line forward, make the back bend. From the bra line down, press down. Lower your heart down and stretch back, down dog or child's pose. Walk your feet forward to the front of your mat. And as you inhale, make a flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come all the way up, spread your arms, reach up. Exhale, arms to your side. Then turn to your side and take your feet wide apart, about four feet apart. And then stand with your pelvis aimed down instead of tipping back, with your rib cage aimed down instead of tipping forward, and then balance the roof of your mouth over your pelvic floor, crown of your head over your pelvic floor. Spread your arms out to the side. So this pose is called Uttita Hasta Padasana, extended hands and feet pose. And we want to be able to feel, can you feel how, first how long your spine feels, and then how open your energy channels feel. So for example, from your neck out through your fingers, you should feel nice length. And then from your sacrum and from your groins, you should feel nice length out through your legs and out through your toes. Like you can feel your toe tips sending energy through those nerve channels or nadis. But your middle stays in so that you're getting the true stretch as opposed to stretching like this. That's no good for nobody. Okay, now we're gonna try a few standing poses, but in the standing poses, the goal is to feel that your energy channels are just as open. So you don't wanna overdo, but you don't wanna underdo, because if I'm just standing like this, there's no energy channels open. Now turn your left leg in a little more than 45 degrees and turn your right leg out. You can pick up the back foot to turn it if you need to. We're gonna ground the back heel, feel the back leg long, reach from the pelvis to the toes, same thing on the front leg, and then slowly start to bend your knee. Depending on how tight your ankle is, you might be able to go far or not far at all. That's okay. And then spread your arms out to the side. Okay, can you get that same feeling of the energy channels feeling nice and open? And then externally rotate your arms and reach it up. Yeah, it feels pretty good. How about in your neck? Do you still feel the the reach out through the fingertips, the feeling of freedom and space. Now this one's real challenging, but I want you to see if you can keep the pelvis reaching to the back heel and the rib cage aimed down. Then bring your arms to your side, straighten your leg, and let's turn the feet parallel again. Then turn the legs to the other side. So I'm gonna angle that back foot in and turn the left leg out. I'm gonna turn it a little more than halfway Ground from your back hip through your back heel. Slowly start to bend the knee without losing the contact of your back heel. Then spread your arms out. Get the same feeling, extended hands and feet pose, and then raise your arms. What about your breath? Can you feel the whole 360 degrees of the rib cage? What's going on in the back? Is the back tight and closed off? That's gonna lend to chronic lower back and neck tension. So feel the movement in the back. Then bring your arms down as you straighten your leg, parallel your feet. 
Stand tall for a moment, spread your arms. Then with your hands to your hips, tip from your pelvis, fold forward. Touch your fingertips to the ground or use the blocks, not a requirement, but you wanna be able to feel in this position that it feels like you're open. So for example, if I had to struggle and strain to get to the floor, that wouldn't be Uttita Hasta Padasana, open energy channels. That would be all crunched up, tightened down. So for that person, they can use hands on a chair or hands on blocks. Feel your breath moving. Then bring your hands to your hips and come back up to stand. Now turn your left leg out and step up to the front of your mat. And then step your left foot back about three and a half feet. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, hands to your hips. Soft bend in your right knee as you tip from your pelvis and fold forward. Now bring your hands to your shin and see if you can get the feeling of length through the back of the spine, the nerves reaching the energy channels from the hips through the feet and from the neck down through the shoulders to the fingers. Everything feels free and open. Now, if you're more flexible, you'll just slide deeper and maintain that free and open feeling. But if you feel like, oh, it's crunching up here, it's tightening up here, then you just stay where you can breathe. And that's called doing yoga. You wanna be in a position where it's steady, firm, you have a good foundation, but you can relax into it. If I were to give you a scale one to 10, you wanna be right at a five in these yoga poses. When we do the core work, I don't care, I'll just jam you through that core work, I'm just gonna be sweating this really hard. But when we're doing these poses, these yoga poses, you wanna feel that you can open up into them. And if you're straining, you're gonna be doing the opposite. So you can feel muscles are turned on, I'm getting strong, but I'm getting strong and flexible in a way that supports my nervous system. Come back up and change sides. So we also start to cultivate a more meditative state when we practice consciously like this. Raise your arms up as you inhale and exhale hands to your hips, micro bend the knee, tip from your pelvis, start to stretch forward. Bring your hands to your shin you can always use the blocks too if you have the blocks. And you can hold there or slide deeper, whatever feels appropriate for you. Now press through your feet, reach your hips to your heels, and come back up to stand. Step your back leg forward. Inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come into a flat back. Bring your hands down and step it back. Downward dog or child's pose. Then set your knees down onto the ground. Bring your right hand behind your head and as you exhale, twist, bring your right elbow towards your left forearm. As you inhale, open up. Exhale, twist, right elbow to form. Inhale, open up. Last one, we'll slide it through and hold, slide your right arm. Now hold in this upright position, getting a twist for your spine, opening in the back of the shoulder. Or if you're feeling like you can go deeper but still keep the energy channels flowing, you can lower your head and take your arm over. Make sure that you didn't hinge from your lower back, that you can still feel the back ribs expanding as you're breathing. Come back up, change sides, left hand behind your head, 
Exhale. Inhale, twist open. Exhale. Inhale, twist open. And exhale. Slide your arm, hold in the upright. Or slide deeper. Come back up and cross your legs, sit back. So that movement is important. The being able to twist like this for uh, the sprinkler dance, if you're familiar with late 80s to early 90s dance moves, you're gonna wanna have that in your repertoire. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and slowly hug it in. Tomorrow we'll be practicing the cabbage patch as well as the running man. So you don't have to worry, we'll, we'll cover all those. Ooh, after those bridge lifts, I could feel a lot of butt was working for that. So that's good. Change the cross. Ooh. Then set your feet down onto the ground and stretch the legs out for Shavasana. Let your palms turn up and your feet fall open. Just relax. Feel your toes and your feet relax. Let the muscles in your legs and your hips soften. Feel your abdomen soften, your back muscles relax. Relax the hands, the arms, and the shoulders. Empty the tension in your jaw and in your tongue. And feel all the muscles in your face soften. If you have time to, you can stay longer in Shavasana in your final meditation. Otherwise, bend your knees and roll over to your side. Join your palms together. And as you sit here for a moment, just take a moment to observe how your body feels at the end of the practice. Do you feel calm? open and energized at the same time. Notice your current mental state. Take a deep breath in through your nose and feel the freedom for your breath to move. And let it out. Thank you, namaste. So thanks so much for joining me for this challenge. If you're ready to take the challenge with me, I need you to do a few things. First, click the link below to go to my website to sign up to the challenge. I'll send you a daily email with the video, a reminder to get on your mat, and with a little brief explanation of what we're gonna be doing. Secondly, subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe button, so that way that you'll be signed up and subscribed to the channel. 
Third, hit the like button and right below, I'm in on the challenge. All right, well, it's gonna be exciting 30 days where we're gonna get the body to open up and get strong at the same time. I'm stoked that you're doing this challenge with me.